Hello and welcome back to Quartz Line. I do apologize, I do have a bit of a sore throat today. I'm on the uh, hot lemon drink. We're going to be looking at the Larder Reva today. Of course, not to be confused by the Larder Neva, which was an off road machine. And in fact, there is a brochure view on that on this channel if you'd like to see it. I'll put a bit of a link up there. This particular larder was launched in the Soviet Union in 1979 and it was based on a very elderly Fiat 124 design. So even when it was launched, it was, like I say, a very elderly um, design. It was known as the VAS 2105 for the saloon version, the VAS 2104 for the estate version and the 2107 for the deluxe version, which had such embellishments as uh, chrome strips on it. Um, now in Germany, it was actually known as the Larder Nova, but the Larder uh, Riva name was mainly for right hand drive markets. So we're talking about the UK, Australia and New Zealand. It arrived into Western Europe in the early 80s as very much a budget car for the budget conscious motorists. It had a very low price in the UK of around about uh, £3,000. And really, a lot of jokes were made about it, but really, for the price, it was a lot of car for the money. The brochure we're going to look at now is from 1994, so it's when it's been in the UK for some time, but still that very ageing design. So let's dive in and I'll have a look at that brochure now. So here is the Larder uh, Reva brochure. Not much to say about the front cover, other than this is quite an unusual parking spot. I hope it's got a good handbrake and it doesn't end up in the canal there. Like I said, this is from 1994, this brochure, and kind of like sales have started tailing off at this time. The peak uh, for the Larder was around about 1986, um, when it was up to around about 20,000 units. By 1988, it had sold 30,000 units in the UK, so it was certainly a sales success. Like I said, by the mid-90s, uh, sales did start tailing off, because you had more competition. Um, competition from Hyundai, Kia, and even companies like Daewoo um, had arrived as well as Proton. So the competition was much higher at this stage. But anyway, let's dig into the brochure and see what we can see on the inside. Okay, so here is the inside of that brochure. Initially in the UK, it came under the uh, 1200L and the 1300 GL. By this stage, 1994, we'd actually got a 1.5 litre engine. It was a 1.5 E. Now on the brochure here, it's really showing that it is a budget car. It's saying, yet the price you pay leaves so much more in your pocket for the other good things in life, like better holidays, more comfortable home, and more days out. So it's saying it's not just for the people that can't really afford a better vehicle, it's also for the people that could afford a more expensive vehicle, but would rather spend that money on anything other than a car. I also remember this being advertised as being uh, uh, your first car you could uh, afford to buy uh, brand new, you know, a brand new car for the price of a used one. The first picture shows the saloon version and then you can see the red uh, estate version. A very practical car, in fact, um, being very square design. They were reasonably roomy on the inside and also very well equipped for a budget car. Uh, the 1.5 litre had a 66 brake horsepower engine, um, so it certainly wasn't a sports car by any stretch of the imagination. It was, like I say, a very elderly design, um, so a very boxy, um, un-aerodynamic vehicle overall. 
Um, so it certainly wasn't a fast car by any stretch of the imagination, but that's really not why you bought uh, a larder in the first place. It was purely on the sales price and also to a certain extent on the durability. They were uh, a, a durable car. Let's not forget, it was built for the Soviet uh, market, um, so it could stand quite harsh conditions. The downside, of course, uh, depreciation was extremely high. Um, you only, it only really became a budget car if you kept it um, as long as you possibly could. If you sold it after a year, in, in reality, it would became a very expensive car due to the high depreciation. The driving position um, and driving enjoyment was also very low. Um, it was more like driving a, a small truck. It really wasn't very refined at all, but it certainly um, found lots of happy owners. So let's look at the next page and see what we can see. So the next page is really looking uh, specifically at the saloon, uh, the Reva 1.5e saloon, like I say. The boot, as you can see on there, was quite cavernous, uh, to be honest with you, so it could have been uh, a quite uh, practical uh, small car. It starts off there by saying, Buying Cars Magazine, I've never heard of Buying Cars Magazine, but nevertheless has voted the Larder 1.5e Bargain Car of the Year. It later goes on to uh, being comfortable by any standards with cloth seats, adjustable headrests and deep pile carpeting throughout. It then talks about that 1.5 litre engine and it does have a 5 speed gearbox on here. The next page is going to be looking at the uh, state car so let's turn the page and have a look at that now. Okay, so this page is also a Reva specification page as well, kind of like in a fold across style. As you can see there, it's even towing a caravan. It says on here, a recent road test carried out by Autocar and Motor Magazine stated, Reva is the cheapest sensible new car you can buy. Why don't more people drive them? Probably because they weren't that nice to drive in the first place, but certainly I can see their reasoning. It was a cheap car, and for the price, like I say, you did get a lot of car for your money. It also shows the uh, technical specifications on there. So it's showing on there you got an internal adjustable door mirrors, wheel trims, tailgate wash wipe on the estate, underbody sound insulation on the estate only, color coded grille electric cooling flat fan, courtesy lights, a load area courtesy light on the estate only, the two spoke steering wheel, deep pile carpeting, vinyl covered boot interior on the saloon only, gas struts on tailgate on the estate only, door pocket uh, storage, under fascia shelf, interior headlamps, sorry, interior headlight load tilt adjustment, um, which obviously helped um, with being towing a caravan there, I guess. Cloth up upholstery, rear folding uh, for increased load space uh, seats on the estate, and a centre lap seat belt. Further technical specifications on there shows we've got a, a top speed for 95 miles per hour on the saloon and 89.3 on the estate and a naughty 60 time of 16.3 seconds for Reva. By the mid-90s, this is obviously um, quite slow times. And that concludes uh, the end of this Larder Neva brochure. So the Larder Reva production ended in European markets in 1997. So what happened to them all? Did they rust? Did they fall apart? Did they all get scrapped? Oh, no, actually. Um, they were reasonably durable cars, like I mentioned before. They didn't have any extreme rusting issues, like we've looked at the 70s cars, which did literally fall apart. No, in fact, most of them were actually sent back uh, to Russia 
who at the time had a shortage of used cars. So that's where they all ended up and I've no doubt some of them are still running around today. In the UK, uh, the the ones that have survived in the UK certainly have ended up uh, with enthusiasts. And in some ways, this car that was a joke um, in the uh, 90s and 80s has found a much sort of cooler outlook. They really are regarded as quite cool cars these days, surprisingly, which we certainly would have never thought at the time. If you have any memories of the Lada Riva, do jot them down in the comments. It will be nice to see. Thank you so much once again for watching Quarterlight. We'll have more brochures and reviews in the near future. So for now, goodbye and take care.